Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing today? Today we're going to be talking about completing the square. We're going to learn how to solve quadratic functions today by completing the square. There are several ways to solve a quadratic equation or function, such as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Please remember that y and f of x are exactly the same thing. They're just fancy way of, of writing y. Please remember that a is the coefficient in front of x squared. Please remember that b is the coefficient in front of x. And please remember that c is the constant or the y-intercept. Give me one second, please. OK, thank you. So that's a, b, and c, guys. We can solve quadratics by graphing. We already did that. We know how to do that. Done. Check. Square root method. We know how to do that. Done. Check. Factoring. We know how to do that. Done. Check. Today, we're going to learn how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. Now, um, tomorrow, we are sorry, our next lesson, Monday, we're going to learn how to do the quadratic formula, how to use the quadratic formula. Today, we'll learn how to complete the square. Completing the square allows you to transform unfactorable trinomials into factorable perfect square trinomials, guys. We know that if I said solve the following quadratic equation and I have, um, I don't know, let's put, uh, now let's make this a negative, let's go uh, negative uh, 12, thank you, equals 0. We can immediately go, oh, wait a second, x, x, I got, um, uh, what would this be, a positive 6 and a negative 2 equals 0, 0 product property, x plus 6 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0, and x will equal negative 6 and positive 2, right? Easy, awesome, super. We know how to do that. That was solving by factoring. Now, gentlemen, here's the problem. What happens, my friends, if I gave you, sorry, if I gave you this? Whoa. What times what is negative 13? But when added together is 4. It's impossible, right? That's where completing the square comes in. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make that a perfect square. Now, when I'm talking about a perfect square, please remember that a perfect square is something like this, guys, or something like this, guys. That's a perfect square. Remember, that comes from the first term squared plus 2 times the first term times the second term plus the second term squared. Okay? That's what we're going to be turning this into, guys. Perfect squares. So that's the goal, just so you know what the goal is. That's what we're going to be doing. Let's get to it. Okay. How does it work? You can make a perfect square trinomial, okay, from x squared plus bx by simply adding b over 2 squared. Remember, the b is what is, is the coefficient of x. In other words, it is the number being multiplied to the x term. Therefore, once you do add b over 2 squared, if you have x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared, that's going to equal a perfect square binomial. That's the goal. Before we learn how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square, <coughs> excuse me, let's practice the simple act of completing a square. I want to complete this square. I have x squared minus 10x. And I want to complete this square so that I can get a perfect square binomial. Step one, identify the b. What is the b here? b is negative 10. Very good. Step two, find b over 2 squared. b over 2 squared is going to be 
negative 5 squared. Do not, I repeat, do not calculate that. Do not, I repeat, it's a trick that I'm going to show you. Do not turn that into 25. Leave it just like that. Do not turn it into 25. Leave it just like that, please. Everyone with me so far? Step three, add the value of b over 2 squared to complete the square. So I have x squared minus 10x plus b over 2 squared. Everyone see what I did so far? Is that a yes, no, maybe, kind of, sort of? Okay. Step four, factor. Okay, rewrite it as a square of a binomial. This is where my trick is going to come into play. Let me show you the long way, and then I'll show you my trick. And you're going to see how my trick is way better. The long way, the technical way, what we're really doing is this. x squared minus 10x plus 25. And then I have to factor this. What times what is 25, but when added together is negative 10? Okay, and what's net x minus 5 times x minus 5? x minus 5 squared. Does that make sense? That's what we're doing, guys. You want to do it the long way? Great. I highly, highly suggest not doing it the long way. Because when you start getting fractions as your b over 2 term, it's very difficult to factor out fractions. So let me show you the way that I like to teach it. You ready? Okay. Everything else stays the same. But to go ahead and write your perfect square binomial, what's the square root of the first term? What's the square root of the last term? What's the square root of the last term? No, guys. It's not 2. It's not 25. What is the square root of negative 5 squared? Don't those cancel? What am I left with? Negative 5. Square it, and you're done. So it's the square root of the first, and then the inside part, the square root of b over 2 squared. If it's positive, you make it positive. If it's negative, you make it negative. That's how you complete a square. Does that make sense? Yes, it's very easy. Thank you. Yes, because we're going to do a bunch of practice now. Let's do it. Let's complete the square for each. Okay. So I've got x squared plus 6x. What's my b? 6, not x, just 6. b is the coefficient, not the x. What is b over 2 squared going to look like? 3 squared. So I add b over 2 squared. And what does this factor out to be? What's the square root of the first term? And the square root of the second term? x plus 3 squared. You're done, guys. You're done. Number two. I got x plus 8x squared plus 8x. What is my uh, b term? What does my b over 2 squared term look like? 4 squared. So I've got x squared plus 8x plus b over 2 squared. What does that factor out to be? Square root of the first one, and then square root of the second is a plus 4 squared. Does that make sense, boys? Talk to me, guys. Please. Yes, sir. Thank you. No, 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 no. You can square a negative. Whoa, what happened there? You can square a negative. Absolutely you can. Negative 5 squared is 25. But I already showed you the long route. We're doing the trick. If you want to do it the long way, yes. You've got x um, it's minus x squared minus 10x plus 25. If you want to do that, that's fine. This is the difference of squares. It's x minus 5 squared. But why would you want to go that long route? You take the square root of the first term and the square root of the second term. The second term in this case is negative 5, so you've got to write it exactly like it says. Okay, no. 
the question is now I understand what you're saying. How can you square that, Mr. How can you take a square root of a negative number? That's not a negative number. What's negative 5 squared? It's positive 25. All the square root does is take this and cancels out the 2. Remember, that's, that's why we learned that chapter. Yes, sir. Yes, we are going to get fractions, and a lot of fractions, and nasty fractions. Yes, we are. I'm sorry. Let's walk before we run, though, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, I've got x squared minus 32x. What is my b? Okay, what is my b over 2 squared? Bless you. Negative 16 squared. So now, look, this is already where it's starting to work out. You really want to square negative 16 and then factor that huge number? No. So what's the trick? Square root of the first, which is x, and the square root of the second. Negative 16 squared. Done. You have completed the square. Now, fractions. I got x squared minus 5x. What's my b? What's my b over 2 squared look like? No, do not turn it into a decimal. Thank you. Great, great mistake. Leave it as a fraction. Negative 5 halves squared. So I add my b over 2, negative 5 halves squared. Now, think about how nasty this would be if you do it the long way. So it would be x squared minus 5x plus 25 fourths. Who wants to factor that? Nobody, right? That's why sometimes my, my methods may seem a little crazy, but I have harder problems in mind always. That's why I always give you guys procedures. I'm always looking ahead to the hardest stuff. So I don't want you to have to stress out and factor that. So let's just use my trick, my brothers. Square root of the first, <laughs> square root of the, of the last. And I have just completed the square. That's just completing the square part. We haven't gotten to the lesson yet. This is preparing you for the lesson. It is easy. It's going to be... It's, you we're going to use this. We're just going to add one little step to it. That's all. This is exactly what we're going to do, guys. Trust me. This is training you for the next section. But before I, I go to the next section, I want to make sure you understand how I factor it into my perfect square, how to locate B, and how to make sure you remember it's B over 2 squared. And you leave it as a fraction if you cannot simplify it to a whole number. You never want decimals here, guys. Never want decimals. You want either whole numbers or improper fractions or integers, negatives. Is everyone with me so far? You good, Bubble? Okay. May I continue? Thank you. Okay, now, how to solve a quadratic equation function by completing the square? All right. First things first, I want you to notice, yes, sir. No, you don't know what to do yet. Um, close. Yes, you are going to divide by 3, but first let me... Let me do one thing first, Bubble. Thank you. Very good. good. Very good job. Do you guys notice how I have a 3 here as the A? Please commit this to memory. When completing the square, I have to have the leading coefficient equal to 1. The coefficient in front of x squared has to be 1. So if it's any other number, if it's negative x squared, 5x squared, 3x squared, 17x squared, whatever number A is, I have to divide that out of the fraction, okay? Now, step one. Isolate the ax squared and the bx and divide A to both sides, unless A equals 1. If it's just x squared, we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to subtract 6 to both sides. I'm going to get 3x squared minus 12x equals negative 6. I'm going to divide 3 to both sides. And I've got x squared minus 4x equals negative 2. I'm going to stop right there and make sure you guys catch up with me and see what this is step by step.
Everyone get this so far? Okay. Now, step two. Complete the square, which we know how to do, but here's the new part. Remember that whatever we do to one side of the equation, we do to the other? So complete the square by adding b over 2 squared to both sides of the equation. So, let's check it out. What's my b? Negative 4. x is not part of the b, gentlemen. If you put x as that part of the b, you're going to get this very wrong. x is x, gentlemen. a is the coefficient in front of x squared. B is the coefficient in front of X, and C is the constant. What is B over 2 squared? Negative 2 squared, right? So check this out, guys. Don't I have to add B over 2 squared to both sides? So I have X squared minus 4X plus my B over 2 squared to both. Sorry, it's adding. To both sides. So everyone see what I just did there? All I did was add my b over 2 squared to both sides. Are you guys with me? Step, oh, that's wrong. Step 3, factor the trinomial. Okay, what does this thing factor out to be? Square root of the first, which is square root of, this, of the last. Negative 2 squared equals what's negative 2 plus 4? Negative 2 plus 4. Negative 2 plus 4. 2. Not negative 2, guys. You keep saying negative 2 and I keep asking you what is it. So that means it's wrong. It's not negative 2. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Now, guess what? Find the square roots. How do I solve for x here? Guys, we already had this chapter. How do we solve for x here? Use square root both sides. The square root cancels the power of 2. x minus 2 equals plus or minus square root of 2. Solve for x by adding 2 to both sides. x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 2. And those are my solutions, my friend. Solve for x. Done. Talk to me, gentlemen. We're going to do plenty of problems, but I want to make sure I, I, I help you out right now so you can really flow with the examples. Please and thank you. Sir, <laughs> there's a plus and a minus, my man, because I have a square root. Whenever I square root both sides of the equation, remember from last chapter, it's plus or minus. And remember, not even the last chapter, it last section, if we have this equals 121, remember I taught you when you take the square root of both sides, there's a positive root and a negative root. Because 11 times 11 is 20, 121, and a negative 11 times negative 11 is also 121. So whenever you're solving using a square root, my man, you've got to use a plus or minus because there are two possible roots. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your honesty and your courage. Anything else? Anything else? Thank you. Okay, let's move on now. Let's do this. Solve each equation. Okay, guys. First thing we got to do is we're going to have to see if we can... Yeah, no, yes, subtract the 3 first. Good man. And I got 2x squared minus x equals x plus 6. Subtract x to both sides. And I've got 2x squared minus 2x equals 6. What else do I have to do right now? Divide by 2, Mr. Moore. Yes, good job. Right, because there's a coefficient in front of x squared. So you divide by that coefficient. So I have x squared minus 2x equals 3. 
Is everyone with me so far? Up, uh, up. Uh, maybe I should learn how to divide and factor. That should be a negative 1x. Thank you. Excellent catch. Thank you, guys. Great catch. Questions on that? Talk to me before I move on, boys. I'm here for you, but you got to talk to me. Yes. Subtract an x. Son, 2 divided by 2 is x squared. Negative 2 divided by 2 is 1. I subtracted this x, son, from here. I subtracted this x. Negative x minus x is negative 2x. Any other questions on this? Thank you for your honesty. Okay, now I'm going to add. What am I going to add to both sides? B over 2. What's B over 2 in this case? Negative 1 half squared. Very good. So I'm going to add negative 1 half squared to both sides. Negative. Negative 1 half squared to both sides. Is everyone with me? Okay, now what does this factor out to be? X minus 1 half squared, beautiful. And this is going to equal 3 plus 1 fourth. What is 3 plus 1 fourth? And what is 3 and 1 fourth in mixed number? You always want these in mixed numbers. 13 over 4. Let's go ahead and take that over here so we can have plenty of room. This is where I'm at right now. Before I solve this bad boy, does anyone have any single question at all? on how, why, where, what I did. Sir, thank you. Because we said 3 plus 1 fourth is 3 and 1 fourth. 12 times 3, uh, 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1 is 13 fourths. We want to keep these as mixed numbers. I mean, improper fractions. Thank you, son. Anything else, gentlemen? Please ask, please. Sir. Okay, if you were to add this x, son, then you're going to have a 2x over here. And then you got to bring it over to the other side regardless. You have to get the x and the x squared alone. Any other questions? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, how do I solve for x? Square root both sides. So I'm going to have x minus 1 half equals plus or minus square root of 13 over 2. Where did that 2 come from? Square root of 4 in the denominator. Absolutely. How do I solve for x now, boys? Oh, yeah. Add 1 half to both sides. So x will equal 1 half plus or minus square root of 13 over 2. Talk to me, gentlemen. <coughs> <laughs> we still have three more to do, but I want to make sure you got this step by step. Sir, what do you mean, what did I do? I square rooted both sides. Square root of 13 is square root of 13. Square root of 4 is 2. I square rooted it. Guys, remember that we already learned the radical chapter? We did do that, right, guys? Remember I told you you need those skills for this chapter? That's why I did that. So this should be common sense by now. Thank you for asking, sir. Any other questions here, guys? Because I have to erase it. Going once. Twice. All right, sold for a dollar. Let's do number two then. What's the first thing I got to do for number two right off the bat? No. Make, this is, make that y a zero. Because remember, when we're solving for the x, don't, isn't the x the x-intercept? Isn't the x-intercept the x value when y equals 0? Thank you, gentlemen. Come again, my brother? Yes, you have to write down the 0. That's why I said to write down the 0. Thank you, sir. Let's add 6 to both sides. 6 equals x squared plus 3x. What's my b here? What's my b over 2 squared? 
three halves square. Good. So I'm going to add three halves to where? Three halves squared to where? To both sides. I'm going to stop right there. Does everyone see what I got? Because once you have that, that's it. It's Mickey Mouse time from there. Does everyone have that gentleman? Everyone have that gentleman. Okay. What does that factor out to, gentlemen? Square root of the first. X. Square root of the second, or the third. Plus 3 halves. It's not plus 3 halves squared. It's the square root of 3 halves squared, guys. When you square root a power of 2, the square root cancels with the power of 2. Again, you're making me reteach stuff we already learned. Sir, thank you. Yes, I do put the square on the outside, but I can only do one thing at a time. And I'm answering 17 different questions at the same time, so you've got to have a little patience with me. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Is everyone with me so far? Okay, 3, three halves squared is 9 fourths plus 6. That goes to 4. That's 24, so I've got uh, 33 fourths equals 3x plus 3 halves squared. Is everyone with me? I'm going to bring it over here so we can see it nice and clearly. How do I cancel out that power of 2? I square root both sides. The square root cancels the power of 2. Square root both sides. So it's going to be plus or minus square root of 33 over 2 equals x plus 3 halves. How do I solve for x? Subtract 3 halves to both sides. So I'm going to have negative 3 halves plus or minus square root of 33 over 2 equals x. Talk to me, please, and thank you. I got plenty of time, guys, so talk to me. Let me know what's going on, my brothers. You got this? Okay, you tell me what to do for this next one then. Number three. Okay, I like the way we're starting. Subtract four to both sides. Very good. Go, I just tell you, you tell me I'm your robot today. X squared minus 4X equals 96. Beautiful. You tell me. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. Okay, what's my B? Negative 4. What's my B over 2 squared? Negative 2 squared. So what do I do with that? X squared minus 4X plus. you got to add it to both sides. Good job, guys. Equals 96. Ah, come on now. 90. Whoa, hello. 96 plus negative 2 squared. Okay, now what? How do I how do I factor this out? What does that factor out to? I don't know. X minus 2. Very good. That's the square root of the first combined with the square root of the last. Squared equals 100. Very good. How do I solve for X, gentlemen? Square root both sides. Awesome. I got X minus 2 equals... Plus or minus 10. Then I add 2 to both sides and x is going to equal. Remember, I have a plus or minus 10. So it's positive 10 plus 2 and negative 10 plus 2. So x will equal 12 and negative 8. Talk to me, my brothers. Let me scroll that down so you can see it all. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, the question was, if I only did 10 plus 2, would that be right or wrong? That'd be completely wrong, because it is plus or minus 10. So when I, when I add 2, I'm adding 2 to plus or minus 10. So I have positive 10 plus 2 or negative 10 plus 2. I must have both roots, gentlemen. Thank you. Great question. Anything else, gentlemen, before we do the last one? 
You sure? All right. Let's do this. Proud of you. Good job. All right. Last but not least, let me erase this. I'm going to erase this. Cool? Yeah, yeah. All right. Bless you. Okay. First step, what do I do here? Okay, I got 9x squared minus 12x, and I was told to add 2. Yes. Add 2 to both sides. Okay, now who said that? Divide by what? Yes. Okay, why would you say divide by 3 when I want you to divide by the A? No, that's not. There's no because. Did I say divide by the GCF, or did I say divide by the A? I said divide by the A, correct? So you're going to divide 9 to both sides. 9x squared divided by 9 is x squared minus 12 ninths x equals 2 ninths. Let's reduce. This is x squared minus 4 thirds x equals 2 ninths. And I'm going to stop right there. I know you guys don't like fractions. Talk to me, sir. <laughs> no, you don't divide by 9x because for the fifth time today, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. No, apparently you don't know that, and that's okay. Shh, relax. It's okay. Apparently you don't know that because you're asking me again, do I divide by 9x? Again, am I dividing by the GCF here, guys? I'm dividing by the a. The A is the A. 9 is the A. So I'm dividing by the A, the coefficient of x squared. So I'm dividing by 9 to both sides, the A. I'm not dividing by the GCF. I never said that. I said we're dividing by the A. Thank you very much for your question and your honesty. Does anyone else have a question on this? Because it's about the fifth time I've answered it. So I will I'll be happy to explain it again, but you need to be honest with me. Does anyone need another explanation of that? Okay, thank you. All right, now, I've got, I'm going to bring it over here so you have more space. Okay, what do I do now? Okay, square both sides. Absolutely not. Thank you. What's my B? Okay, now here's the tough part. B over 2 squared. Please pay attention. It's stay, change, flip. Stay, change, flip. So when I have a fraction as my B, you want the easy way? Just multiply it by 1 half. Negative 4 thirds times 1 half, I can reduce... So it's going to be negative 2 thirds. So I'm going to add negative 2 thirds squared to both sides. Please ask all you want, brothers. Stay, change, flip. The math is right there. Ask away, man. Ask away. Negative, negative 2 thirds. Yes, I forgot to put a negative here. Thank you, sir. Ask away, guys. If you have no idea what I did there, you kind of have an idea. You're a little stuck. Talk to me, my brothers. Okay, I tried. What does this factor out to be? Square root of the first. Square root of the last. Minus two-thirds. Excellent. Squared. Equals. This is two-ninths plus 4 ninths, which is 6 ninths. Do not reduce it. I'll tell you why right now. It's going to make your life easier. How do I solve for x here? Square root both sides. So I've got x minus 2 thirds equals, come on, man, minus 2 thirds squared equals plus or minus square root of 6 over 3. Dop, 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 dop. I just had a huge... Huge brain block. I already squared it, Moro. Pay attention. Let me erase this down here. I already squared it. Sorry about that. X minus 2 thirds equals plus or minus square root of 6 over 3. Add the 2 thirds to both sides. X equals 
2 thirds plus or minus the square root of 6 over 3. Yes, sir, my brother. That's why I have a plus or minus. This does come out to be 2 thirds plus square root of 6 over 3 and 2 thirds minus square root of 6 over 3. But you can't really combine square root of 6 and 2. Again, we learned that last chapter. You cannot add unlike terms. And you can never add radicals with numbers. You cannot combine them. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I got the four ninths from squaring my b over 2 squared. Negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds is 4 ninths. No? Negative 2 thirds times negative 2 thirds is 4 ninths. Okay, but that's what you asked me. Go ahead. Come again? I don't understand what you're saying, my man. I square rooted x minus 2 thirds squared. I canceled that out. That drops me down with x minus 2 thirds equals plus or minus square root of 6 over 3. I don't get it. I get rid of this negative 2 thirds by adding 2 thirds to both sides, which is x is equal to 2 thirds plus radical 6 over 3. Where are you not seeing it, my brother? Okay, that's what I was saying, and you said, no, that's not what I'm asking, but I guess it was what I was asking, what you were asking. Two ninths plus four ninths is six ninths. Does that make sense, my brother? Thank you for your honesty. Any other questions on this, gentlemen? Okay. Thank you very much. Homework is valid, and God bless you.